Welcome to the Poundcast. 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 Welcome back. Welcome to the Poundcast. That's a really nice remix, huh, Brett? It's, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's cool. Really cool. Should I play the whole thing? Let's listen yeah. to more of it. This is yeah, good. Play the whole, play the whole right. thing. Okay. Really well. Welcome to the Poundcast. The ending is that's the ending is especially yeah, something about nut. Uh, something about nut. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, welcome to the Poundcast remix from. I lost it. Brent, what's his name? Oh, that's Tom Houston, I think. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Huestin. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Oh, Tom, Tom Huestin. Huestin. Yeah. Tom Huestin. Thank you for that remix. He Tom is a Patreon. Pimple, Patreon subscriber, patreon.com slash poundcast. If you want to um, support the poundcast, go there. And if you go there, what do you get, Brent? Well, you can get stems for the, re the to do a remix if you want. Stems from the one of the many One of the many benefits, perks. You, can, you get extended episodes. Yeah, you yeah. get extended episodes for a really low introductory price. Yeah, and it's also, you know, those those extended episodes are not sometimes the same length as the main episode. So you're getting double the pleasure, double the fun, but at least you're getting at least half of the pleasure, bone more. So bone more. <laughs> yeah, half of the pleasure, half to double the pleasure more, and on top of all that, there's after dark videos. You get extended That's right. That's videos. Right. Get okay. extended videos. Okay. Extended videos. It's a no brainer. So it's pretty That's, cool. And there's, you're going to get other perks. Too. You're going to get other little pluses, little sneak peeks, little things. Sneak, okay. sneak peeks. And, and also sometimes, you know, just other little things. Who Plus knows? you're going to know, you're going to, you're going to feel great that you are supporting the podcast and you're a real pound pumper nickel. Mm -hmm. And also if you are interested in the videos, there's a YouTube page now for the podcast and it's youtube.com slash the Poundcast. Okay, a couple more plugs. Poundcast t-shirts, there's still a few left, and they are at the rock bottom price of $10. Okay? At big cart dougpound.bigcartel.com. Also, Doug Pound Socks. Dougpound.bigcartel.com. And it's you know, fair prices. <laughs> Great prices over at dougpound.bigcartel.com. Also, one more thing. I do a daily blog on Instagram called the Squirrel Report. And the only way to access that and get the secret password to be allowed in is by going to patreon.com slash Doug Pound. And that's pretty damn cheap too. For a daily blog about my, my squirrels, sometimes I'm out camping and I'm looking at squirrels and I was just camping with our two guests today. Sure. And, uh, we saw some squirrels out there too. We even saw, we saw the ultimate squirrel when I was camping with you guys in Utah. And we'll introduce them in a second, but this is Natalie Alsip Edwards and Molly Mostert. Did I get your, did I pronounce your name right? Um, I pronounce it Mostert, Mostert. I just call you Molly Mustard because I mean, mustard. Like, Molly Mustard is pretty. Mustang. That's what it means. Right? Muskrat. Yeah. Doesn't it, your last name means mustard in? It does mean mustard, literally in Afrikaans, which is like South Afrikaans. Africa. That's oh, South African, yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, 
It all, and look at this. What color is this? Yellow that's, mustard. That's yellow. French's yellow mustard. French's yellow. Not your classic <laughs> mustard. If you're going to say that shirt's mustard, no, nah, no. Nah. It's American mustard. French pronunciation is mustard. Okay, well, now there you have it. So basically, you go to, you go to patreon.com slash dunkbound for the squirrel yeah. report, and you can see the squirrel report I did with them just yesterday, actually, uh, when we were camping. We've been, well, well, we'll get into more about you guys, but I just wanted to. What was that? Yeah. Wait, speaking of camping. Yeah. I've, I've been wondering. Um, what about it? So what about we, it? When we were camping, Doug, you yeah. guys really excellent beef jerky out oh, it was so good to share with everyone oh it wasn't beef jerky it was louisville vegan jerky actually and what? it's funny it's funny you ask because they are actually our sponsor today that stuff was so delicious this is my I, favorite flavor like flavor you know i actually didn't didn't know it was even vegan i thought we were eating meat together doug and i thought we were breaking vegan edge together as like a like a packed <laughs> yeah, you thought you thought something this delicious is worth going taking a bite of some meat, but guess what? We didn't even do that because Louisville vegan jerky is vegan jerky. So, really? and uh, you can go to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com and get twenty percent off of your entire order. You don't have to go to a store, wear a mask. You could simply go to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com, use the code word Poundcast, and get how many percent off, Brent? Twenty. Do you guys have a bag? Didn't I give you a bag? Oh, yeah. Here it is. Buffalo dill. Mm. Have you tried it? <laughs> yeah, so, of, of course, you know, they're, they're our sponsor today, as usual. And um, Get right in. Can't say enough about... Oh, why don't you take a bite? We're going to try it. Mm, so good. It just melts in your mouth. There you go, this folks. This is the best flavor. It's yeah, if you eat beef jerky, it's not going to melt in your mouth. It's going to... No, you're going to be chewing for hours. You're going to be chewing for hours. You want to get your chewing done so you can get on with camping and have a great trip. So Listen, good. this stuff chews fast. Wow, I'm going to get some today. Good. Where? You should get some. That's, I'm going to go to Sprouts probably and get some. Wow, the flavor explosions are... <laughs> buffalo I'm going to get that buffalo dill. That's why I want to get that. It tastes like a buffalo sandwich. Like. Yeah. Wow. Well, dunk. there you have it, folks. You can't go wrong. And uh, my friends here, mm. they know. They were there camping when we ate it. And they thought it was beef. And they thought <laughs> it was beef. But it's not. Okay, so uh, who are you guys? These are my two friends from Salt Lake City. And I met, first I met Molly on Instagram. We'll, 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 we'll go back to the origin, how it all began. I put out a, I, I put out a album, Brent, called The Body Tight Workout, and it's available on Spotify. You look up DJ Doug Pound on Spotify or any the of your- workout the, tape. Any of your, any of your iTunes type things. It's a workout it's tape. Windows yeah. Media Player, it's on there. No, yeah. Not, real Player, you can get on Real Player. I followed you on Instagram. Um, because you know, I, your videos make, they make me laugh. So I like to, you know, well, Molly made a video of herself working out to my, um, I stumbled upon the body tight workout on your Instagram. I checked it out on Spotify and I said, wow, I should really actually work out to this. But what's the point of doing that if I'm not filming it on my Instagram? So I did that. I tagged Doug Pound. And ever since, we've been best friends. You've been best friends. We're best friends now, Brent. I forgot to say. How you. long ago was this? Me and Brent are kind of best friends, but. <laughs> this was, I believe, in September of 2019. She's over here making me jealous right now. And then, okay. we, and then we went dancing and saw DJ Doug Pound play live in, at Sundance. And we went well, dancing. I said, oh, you live in Utah. Yeah, I said, I'll be in, I'll be in, um, so I'll be at Sundance, come to my, come dance at Sundance. And then, um, then we really became best friends. I'm sorry, did you say this is last September? Well, no, and then Sundance was uh, January. I said, you should come yeah, to my, like um, they were working at Sundance. And I said, well, you might as well come to my, I was at the, I DJed the premiere 
party for Feels Good Man, which is, is the, movie really about, uh, the movie about Peppy the Frog and Matt Fury. And, um, it's a great film. Highly recommend. You know, we can probably get Matt Fury for the show. Well, yeah, we're working on that, too. That movie is coming out in a, in a month or two. So we're going to be... Also a great dancer. I danced yeah, with him. Yeah, he was a great we dancer. And artist. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was fun. So we've been best friends ever since. And then we went. So Is September. Uh, no, that of... was January. No, 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 no. But you met online September. We met online in September. No, in it. September, we weren't friends at all. I was just like, oh, who's this weird person that likes me? <laughs> Tagging okay. me in videos. Right. Just sliding into the DMs. Yeah. In but this is something I realized today. The day we met in person was six months ago to the day today. This is our six, today is our six month Aww. anniversary of meeting in person. All three of us. It was January 27th, January 27th. that right your DJ set at Sundance was. And today is July 27th. Well, here's to another six months. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so let's get into it. Brent, do you have any questions for them? Well, what are you, what are you all about? I mean, what's your story? What do you do? What do you do together? What's going on? Um, I'm an artist. <laughs> okay, I, let, me, I, let me just say a little, I, I looked at their Instagrams and they, they do like, they, were, they do something called schmoof, schmoofies. Schmoofies. And so then I was- That's the main like, collaboration. We collaborate on a lot of different things, but schmoofies is like the main fun one that's most time consuming, especially. Schmoofies is a, is a lot. Um, yeah. it's, we can get into it. It's though. almost we have too much. time. What no. is a schmoofie? So a schmoofie is this like giant fuzzy um, costume. It's an, no, it's a an schmoofie alien. is an alien. Come on. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's an alien. <laughs> Schmoofies are aliens, and they're extremely cute. They're fuzzy and colorful. And they sing and dance around the party and hug people. There's two schmoofies, and, and they're both pregnant. Their bodies are covered in, like, orifices that have little pouches that are filled with tiny alien babies that we make um, with special little cute eyes. They look like, well, we have some examples. The video. These are um, some of the Natalie stickers makes stickers, made. and she made stickers of these. They're portraits of the babies. babies. Uh, so they're not, it's animated. Performance. It's a perf it's a live interactive performance art piece. And I play one of the schmoofy parents who gives birth to schmoofy babies throughout the performance. And Natalie plays Wanda, play Wanda. the adoption agent. She's who's painted also green an alien. And she's green. Wears she a wears suit. a suit. She has a clipboard with a catalog. She shows people the babies in her catalog. Well, each of the babies, we take photos of them before they're born. We call it sonograms. And then they're named. And then I make a catalog that says each of their names and their photo. And then walk around the party and ask people if they're interested in adopting and that there will be an auction at the end of the party. And so... And as they're born, Wanda captures the babies and then sells them to the audience. Yeah. yeah. So that's okay. How it goes. Oh, it, it's lot. Okay, got it. Okay, it's live. okay. It's like yeah. usually the times we performed it is usually like during an an art exhibit that's like two D, like art, art on the walls, and then during that opening we'll have schmoofies come and and have this. Um, event. So the schmoofies, what are they made out of? They're made out of stuffed animals that we get from thrift stores. We seam we them cut apart. Them up, we mutilate them. And then recombine and then their bits together. Frankenstein them back together into our own, whatever we want them to look remix. like. Remix. We, can... we remix the, the stuffed animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they're, they're like upcycles. We can see these stuffed animals, or these schmoofies. Uh, we can see what they look like on the Instagram page. Yeah, on their, on their Instagram. That's oh, can you spell that? Schmoofies at S H M zero zero f i three z z it's simple just look it up maybe so, we can like yeah but you, you guys also do this thing that i thought was pretty cool the um the photo booth the hand-drawn photo booth that's right yeah. uh, can you explain what that is um yeah so that's that's my one of my businesses that i started like eight ish years ago 
And it's basically like a pretend photo booth, but instead of me using a camera to take your photo, I'll just sketch your um, your poses really quickly onto like a little film strip. So it, we, I, I have some papers we can like sketch out later if you want, but um, it, it goes really fast and it's like, they're always goofy, but people just hold their pose and then you draw them. So and if me and Brent were gonna do it, if you were gonna draw me, yeah. so I'd go like, like I'm in the photo booth, I'm like. Yeah, pose one, get ready, yeah. And you hold that you and we go. That. How long do they have to hold that? Usually like a minute, if there's two- You can two do it in a minute? Okay, we, do, we train Natalie to go really in fast. A minute. I, so I work for Natalie doing the hands yeah, on Yeah, Molly booth. came on like- She two, has like a fleet ago. of artists because it got so huge. Like it used to be just her doing this on the street at events. But then we do weddings and stuff like that. But then it grew so much. She's like, I need more people to help me with this. It's gonna be so successful. But it's also so cute. I have like five artists right now and everyone has a really distinct different style. Like Molly's is super like bubbly and cute. And there's another girl, Sayako, who's trained in animation and hers are like really animated Anime. cartoons. Um, so it's just like fun to see these different styles in the same. Yeah, but do you have anybody doing a style that makes people look kind of like uglier in a way? Yes. Like they kind of did have exaggerate, <laughs> make it more gr actually, make them grotesque kind of? I mean, the, it, for me, the I'm not trying to do caricatures. We're just trying to like capture your likeness. But mm -hmm. I did have one artist and he he was really good. I loved his drawings, but he would constantly get complaints of people being like, oh, you made my like lines too thick or oh this looks weird but his i like i liked his drawings but it was just his style to make them look um strange <laughs> yeah cool yeah. and so uh you'll do it so that there's four you know kind of four different shots yeah just like on yeah. a like just like a photo booth and then mm -hmm. i have this i built this little like facade and so you'll see me or the artist through a frame and then there's two slots one where you put money in and it's marked money in. <laughs> and then you put the photo out and I've trained all the artists, they have to do this. Go when you put, when you we extrude have to the make photo. The sound. It's humiliating. <laughs> it's part of the, it's part oh, of Oh, you do? You gotta make the sound? You gotta make the yeah. sound, the machine sound. People love it. You, they always get a kick when you make the machine sound. How much does it cost? Um, it's right now, the price is $10, mm -hmm. which is very affordable. The very low for price. Four, for four drawings? The rock bottom price. Because they're always goofy. Ooh, and $10. the best thing. How big are they? Each frame is like this Didn't big. you bring some? Yeah, they're in my art box, which I don't have right here. It's like, if, the, it's same, like, two it's by like two the same inches. as your classic photo booth. Yeah, uh, like an actual scale. photo booth. But what Straight. else is really fun is that since it's drawn, you can be like, oh, draw me as a dog or a cat or draw me surfing or whatever goofy the thing. The possibilities are endless. People get really like, weird with it. It's super fun. Or like so, draw so cool. my dead grandma who's not even here. Or draw me four times and my face is like on my own face. Or draw me blurry and you have to figure out how to draw them blurry. Draw me like licking my own butt. <laughs> it's so goofy. People get really Anything. silly with it. So what other businesses do you have, Natalie? My other main business is called the Local Artist Sticker Machine. So it's, I started with just one, but now I've got 25 um, you know those old vending machines that you put quarters in and like chunk, and you used to get like Disney. You put them in a slot and it's like slot machines. Yeah. And then it pulls out with the little cardboard sleeve. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I have like 25 of those sprinkled around the Salt Lake and surrounding cities. Sprinkled. Sprinkled. And yeah. what I do is I accept submissions from local artists and then I pay them royalties and I print their stickers and then sell them and display them in the machine with like info about the artist to like promote their work. And I also post on my Instagram, of course, to like continue to promote them. And sometimes I put my own designs in. And even Molly, she's been in it. I had a design. Um, yeah, early on. That was printed as a sticker. It was cute. It was like an alien with a knife. It was Halloween themed. Yeah, you were you had did a call on your Instagram. You're like, give me your creepy Halloween design. Because <laughs> that's the best. For like a scary sticker. And I was like, what's scary? And I drew this like wiggly, like creepy monster with like all these different colored eyes and I was like but it's not that's not scary like that's just a cool monster so I drew one of its tentacles like holding a little knife anyway pretty cute so it could stab you like in any second that's what's scary now does Molly have these kind of businesses in the same do you have your own businesses as uh, well or I, you wish. I am nowhere near as ambitious and industrious as Natalie here but 
she's involved. We collaborate a lot. I was you know, thinking I about do it. Thing, other you things. You even help judge. So people submit a lot of, of art to the to my like email for the sticker machine. And it's really hard sometimes to choose. So I've called in Molly to be one of the judges. And so she helps curate this project. Um, Let me get this straight. Um, so these stickers, you can get them in slot machines, basically, yeah? Kind no, of. when no, when you say slot machine, you're thinking like a Vegas, like yeah, no, 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 no. Like I'm thinking of I, no, no. It's a vending knob. machine. We can I can a photo. Vending machine, yeah. Yeah, like a vending machine, like, like a, an like an old timey analog crank. It's like crank. crank. Yeah, I know. I'm not thinking of I'm not thinking of this. this. I'm thinking That's of this. Great. Here's a photo. So you can play the slots, and instead well, of winning the coins that come. Hold on, hold on. Wait, hold that, hold that up again. Hold but there's, on. there is a, an element. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Those are classic sticker machine. They have them down the street at my you always taco the restaurant. Down the you street. always get the future. Right. Okay. So how, of, oh, keep going. Oh, how did you get in those? How do you get in those? She bought them. I bought them. They're mine. Well, oh, you bought, well, yeah. you own the actual slot machines. Yeah. I started with one and was like, what am I, I'm going to do this like experiment. And then the people loved it. And so I just kept growing. And I like, they're kind of hard to find, weirdly. Yeah. So on eBay or sometimes I'll travel to buy like 10 at a time. How much do they cost? It, it, there's like a range. Um, new, it'll be like three or $400 for a four column. That's like, that's the photo yeah. one I showed you. Because they come in different sizes. And then sometimes you can get them for less if you know how to make a deal. <laughs> And where so, do they ex uh, where, where they exist at store? You put them in stores yeah. and stuff. Or? Well, I I put them. They're in art galleries and coffee shops mostly, and a couple bars in Salt Lake and in Ogden and one in Texas. My parents have a toy store down there, so I got a machine for them. And there's one in St. Louis because my sister is involved with the gallery. That's there. How do you approach these businesses? Do you say, hey, can I have this sticker slot machine thing and, and put it in your place? And do they get like a commission or something like that? Or um, A lot of them just like the project and want to do it for free. They're like, wow, that's so cool. Just like, you don't want to get paid. And then some of them are, I, I offer a commission. If they're like hesitant, I'll kind of negotiate and offer a commission. Um, and, but yeah, mostly people just think it's cool because it promotes the artist. And actually it usually acts as a draw for them like if you wanted to go to a coffee shop in Salt Lake and you know about the sticker machine, you'd be more inclined potentially to go to one that has a sticker machine, especially because I'm constantly advertising that location on like Instagram and website. How, how much do the stickers cost? A dollar. Yeah, and, and, and it's been popular enough that it has been able to generate a decent amount of money for yeah. the, the artists involved and all that stuff. Yeah. And well, yourself. For the artists involved, I wish that the scale, I pay them like, um, it's 8%, 8 royalties, which is like, I've tried to find out what was the standard and found like between five and 10. And um, mostly they just like to, to have their name out there and then they get some free stickers and like get uh, a little bit of money. But the scale is still kind of small. So it's, they're not making a living necessarily, but it's like, it's like selling an art piece. Sure. Um, and usually artists aren't creating art specifically for it. I have had that sometimes, but often the, they're like, oh, here's a cool drawing I did. Let me submit that. So they've already done the, the work. Um, yeah. Natalie, do you um, make your living as an artist fully? You don't have to do any kind of other day job or something like that? Well, it's been, yeah, slowly I'll like create a bunch of different things, like these multiple different um, projects to sustain me. But the pandemic has changed that a bit. But I do have a super part-time job at the University of Utah as a shop tech. So there's like a wooden metal shop that the students use to build their models. And um, I work in that shop, helping the students learn how to use the tools, like woodworking and welding stuff. And then mostly I get access to that shop. So that's the first. Oh, do you have a wood background? <laughs> um, I dabble. I'm like, I learn. I'm, learning that sort of stuff. I wouldn't say I'm like a carpenter by any means, but I've built a couple things. I built some furniture and the photo booths and whatever like needs to be. If I'm inspired by something, I'm like, oh, I can learn a, learn a skill in order to make that happen. Natalie can make anything. Can you carve? Um, I've carved like wood blocks. <laughs> uh, like Wait, painting. you carve your own stamps. Hello. Yeah, I carve a lot of stamps and wood blocks. 
Oh, you make stamps too, huh? Yeah, I can yeah. I make you a custom stamp in I like, should, in like that, for your five show. minutes. Whatever you want as a stamp, she'll just be like, and then it's like, oh, there's the, the duck riding on a pony. How did, the two, how did the two of you meet? We met at the university. We, we worked met, in the garden together. Uh, volunteering at the, the university edible gardens. Uh, yeah. I was the compost steward, and Molly was... I was just a volunteer. a volunteer. But I did do some illustrations for the garden. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had, like, events, so it was, like, posters and stuff. And what was it about each other that made you guys want to become friends? I liked how sassy Molly is and how, like, Are you serious? cute and sweet and sassy. It's, like, a great combo. All right, let's go back into the... Let's, let's start from the beginning. Molly, where are you from again? Um, I've been living in Salt Lake City since I was like six, but before then I, my parents moved around like a bunch of times. So I lived in like four different states, um, before, before you know, age six. Yeah. Yeah. What were they doing? Were they, um, what, what, yeah. What were they doing moving around so much? Are they like race car drivers and they're just, they have to test their cars <laughs> out a lot or. Yeah, they were. They were both we had to drive really fast from drivers. each city. Yeah, and they were like, "How are we gonna get our miles in? We gotta be practicing all the time." So they would load up the, their race cars. That's what I imagine. Like race car drivers got to do. They have to like be drive. They have to wake up. Well, you know, we don't have a race today, but I gotta get out there and drive. I have to be practicing on the American roads, and they just get on the freeway and they're just going state to state, just practicing their racing. I've seen those. I've seen those guys. Zip like, like those guys that when you're on the when you're on the highway and they're just like zigzagging through with their like Mustangs. Yeah, trying stuff. to kill you. Yeah. They're just rehearsed. They're just rehearsal. This rehearsal. That's what it's, it is. It's race rehearsal. Never, never thought about New perspective that. on those. Well, I did think about that because my parents. Race were, car drive. No. Um. My dad. He was just like he was like hard to work with. Um. So we kept getting fired from his his job as a bio a biochemist. Um, he just kept getting fired and then finding new jobs in different cities. And then he would just be like, Hey, I found a great job in uh, Cleveland. So that's where we're going. Say goodbye to Miami. Miami? You lived in Miami? I was conceived in Miami, but I was born in <laughs> Cleveland. Where, like at the club or where? Um, probably <laughs> in the house. Oh, okay. was Gloria Estefan playing in the background? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That help missionary position. Okay, event, well, you know, what's I that was, song, Brent? That was a mistake. So I don't uh, really know what song. Come on, come on everybody. Let's do that. Let, yeah, come Let's on, everybody. Let's do the conga. Is conga, that the yeah, something yeah. like that. That's probably the song. See, that's how you became so sassy. We this good song we was did playing. have a best hits of, of Gloria Estefan <laughs> CD like in our family collection. Wait, it's like been you can tell it's been played so many times. It was like a Ray Scratch. It might, it might have been played during that conception, in which case, that's probably, yeah, where you got that, that spice from. I'm just going to assume that. And that sass. You got some of that sass that might have I have a quick question about the sass. <laughs> have you ever said anything to Doug, for example, that has sort of been like, ooh, okay. okay you know? thing yeah, daily. Sass is like, like it's that. such a it's part like, of me that I don't even know that it's happening. Like, Sometimes people will be like, yeah, so that was kind sometimes of you're kind of like mean in this way. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. Wait, Doug, do, do, what's an example of that? Yeah. Oh, what's an example of that? Like, why would you, but I don't know. She's just like, everything I say, she like busts my balls about it. Okay. What's an one example? I'm or just like trying to, I was trying to act like that. Like, okay, say some, say like something, Brent. Me? <laughs> uh well uh hey how's it going what's that keyboard behind you what do you like <laughs> where'd you get that it's like looks broken or i, don't, I, can't, I can't even do it i can't, I can't even do it i don't even know no that doesn't that doesn't work that's but, not, no that's not clever enough it's gotta I know. be more like i know but you're getting to you're getting yeah it's something like that okay let's oh, move on God. let's move on to uh natalie's Natalie's origin story. Now you're from Texas, oh, right? Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was born. You grew up in a toy store. I grew up in a toy store. I was born in Austin, Texas, where my parents um, were like, you know, old Austin hippies, like 70s hippies. 
and they started a toy store by hand making wooden toys and um nice. then so they kind of like kept it's pretty cool. Yeah, they, they still but, have this. Well, I was going to say, you do have a wood background then, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. My, yeah you were wa- raised by wood. Like, yeah, raised by wood. Yeah, I, like, learned to use a bandsaw when I was, like, eight. But I, but we were always sort of timid because it's so loud and you don't want to get hurt when mom and dad are, like, working. Um, we would also make, we, we were, like, we made knitting needles all the time on this, like, belt sander. It's so easy to make, to just, like, carve a knitting needle. So I made a lot of. Uh, <laughs> out of wood? Yeah, you just like, it's just like a belt sander and then you get a, a dowel and then cut it to your size and then just like sand it like a pencil and then you can glue a bead on the back. And so we would just like make knitting needles. Doesn't a knitting needle have a little hook at oh, the tip? That's a crochet hook. That's a crochet needle. Yeah, crochet I guess hook. I don't know a knitting, I just I don't know what a knitting, knitting needle, needle is. It's just like two, two skewers. One. Yeah. And then a crochet, you just use one. And you're like, and, using and it has a hook. Anyway, so yeah. Why we, did you make so many knitting needles? Because like, it was really easy. That many. It was just easy to make. Don't you just need the one pair? That's the thing good? about it. That's why it's silly. We just, like, me and my sister, we just made a lot of, I just remember making them a lot. We didn't even use them that much. Well, sometimes, but. Anyway, so yeah, I grew up in the toy store context, and my parents actually used to live, they, they had a space of the toy store, and they lived in the back half of it, and that's where my sisters were born via midwives. But then by the time I was born, they're older, they had moved into like an apartment. And um, yeah, we just grew up with toys and like they're creative entrepreneurs. So they were always encouraging us to make art and find ways to sell it. And sometimes, actually, sometimes I show my paintings in their um, their toy store slash gallery called Terra Toys in Austin, Texas. Yeah, what's it called? Terra Toys, T-E-R-R-A. Like like land. Yeah, toys yeah. Of, like earth. Toys of the yeah. earth. Yeah, exactly. Because like, yeah, they, and they, they really do, they have a really unique buying practice. They say classic, beautiful, fun. And um, I think that really is exemplary of the stuff they buy and sell. And they have like thousands of vendors. So there's always new different stuff. It's a huge toy store. Yeah, it's like 12,000 square feet. It's incredible. Like you could spend hours in there. All so- the toys there are made by... Um- they're all like mom and pop manufacturers kind of many of them but yeah like for instance they don't carry lego or barbie just because that's too huge of a company they wouldn't even sell to them but also basic yeah they're they so they buy from um a lot of littler companies and i mean they do sell mass-produced stuff too or like yo-yos and like gag toys and they also have like hand-painted three thousand dollar matryoshka or like the ride-on dragon that you can sit on if you're even up to 300 pounds and like what's matryoshka it's the um russian nesting dolls yeah oh they no gotcha they have a whole case of like these beautiful it's a really awesome store so check out like you were like had the ultimate upbringing i mean every kid wants to have grow up in a toy store Uh, it was really that or candy store well, these aren't, the, these aren't the toys that you would see on commercials on TV, but your, your parents didn't even let you watch TV, right? Actually, yeah. For the beginning of my childhood, they, it was highly restricted, but we did watch TV, it, it, like, eventually. We watched a lot of Disney. Old did Disney. you ever watch TV and say, Dad, Mom, what? Mom, Dad, how come we don't, don't, how come we don't have these toys? What, <laughs> I want Lego. <laughs> I want Lego. Yeah, I want these toys. Where's Where's Barbie. my buddy? I want my buddy. I yeah. want Cabbage Patch. I want Barbie, and I want Cabbage Patch now. Where's my strawberry shortcake, Mom? I want my strawberry, I want strawberry now. shortcake. Weirdly, now. Like, yeah, my cousins all had Cabbage Patch, and they didn't sell that in the toy store, so we didn't have Cabbage Patch toys. And so I was always like, "Let's go wait, to wait, 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 wait." Uh, Natalie used to make her own Beanie Baby. Oh yeah, that's a good story. Me and my sister, Nika, we loved Beanie Babies. We were collecting them. And we'd bug my mom, like, let's get Beanie Babies. Like, let's go to this little gift shop like, for Beanie Babies. And finally, she bought us a couple. And then one day she was like, okay, here's a new rule. You have to make me a Beanie Baby. And whenever you make me a new one, I'll buy you one and trade. And so we did that. And now she still has this collection of these, like, super weird handmade, child-made Beanie Babies. Like, there's a snake that's filled with sand. Like Your mom? Known by an eight-year-old kid. <laughs> it was the perfect preparation for making the little schmooky babies. For the Your mom? Toys. Your mom? My mom. Who, I'm sorry, who, who did you make those oh, for? My mom. She said, yeah. you have to trade. Yeah, that's cool. A baby or a baby. Very cool. 
Did she sell those for a huge markup and like make <laughs> she would, cash? Which, yeah, one day she will. No, they're just like in her drawer. They're really goofy. But truthfully, were you ever at all kind of jealous of the stuff you saw on TV and thought, how come my parents' toy store doesn't have that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I do remember like the Cabbage Patch Kids or like Betty Spaghetti. And I do remember my mom actually buying one. I really wanted this purple horse with like sparkly eyes and hair or something. And she bought it for me and I loved it. So. Did they, your parents they sell nice. My Little Pony? For yeah, them? no, they have Briar horses actually. But you liked My Little Pony growing up. Uh, that was more Mika's thing, I think. I was super into it. What was the horses that when, they had? When I, when, I, when I grew up, I had My Little Pony, but now I have. Realistic. Oh. When I was growing up, I had My Little Pony. Did you collect them? Well, now I have My Big Horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a Doug joke. Like, perfect. <laughs> it's, one of my, it's one of my Doug jokes that I do. Can we see your big horse? Where is it? It's out back. I'm going to, uh, I'll bring her around later. Okay, later. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's meet her. So, um, so Natalie, I mean, you just, you were born to be the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial artist that you are today, born and bred. Did you, do you have any siblings and are they doing similar Nika. stuff? Nika. Yeah, Nika, she's my middle sister. She's a painter and um, she's like, I'm a multimedia artist. So I'll do like a million different things. She does woodworking, but she mostly is an oil painter and she's very prolific. But she lives in St. Louis and um, shows there and has been in the sticker machines. And then my biggest sister, Sylvia, we're all like a year or so apart, so it's not that big of a difference. She still works and manages the toy store. She's like, her fantasy is to be the toy store owner and like take over when my parents are done. So she's, she's being groomed for that. Apparently. She can't wait for those parents to... <laughs> No, no, they the have a relationship. That's to come true sooner than later. She still has a lot to learn, I'm sure. This is a good <laughs> idea for like a horror, a horror film plot. Like, <laughs> Murder in the toy store. Yeah, it's like their fantasy of being a toy store uh, <laughs> owner needs to happen soon. Oh my God, Doug, she it's could, so dark. Could, like train a fleet of evil toys yeah. to take like, over. Like wind up doll, wind up like bugs your that come and like. <laughs> No. Yeah, it's got to be an accident, per, like done by a, like a weird yeah, wind up monkeys. crack uh, nutcracker or something. You know those monkeys with the symbols? Oh yeah. Do they have that there? That sounds like a classic toy that my, they would have. My mom has a collection of those, and she regularly paints still lifes of them. It's really cute. Hey, did your uh, parents make the nesting dolls? No, they those are like painted um, and imported from from Russia. Yeah. Actually, I, I got one in Russia once when I was in Russia. I got uh, this really, I still have it, this beautiful set. And um, yeah, it's one of my, it's a, a prized possession, actually. Yeah, I wonder what the ultimate nesting doll is. Like, how many have they, how many have they done? Do you know? There's can, probably like, a record. You mean, like, how big does it like how, Like, how many levels? I've, the biggest I've seen is, like, this tall, and that will have, like, 16. And the small, or like, like how a rice. small could it get? Like Piece microscopic, or like the size of a. Like scissor. you have to get out your microscope to That's be a the good smallest idea. doll. I saw one. My parents have a collection, of course. They collect all these toys, and they have this really amazing handmade or uh, hand painted mashashka that's of all of the phases of Britney Spears. So there's like, it's really weird. Like <laughs> each doll is like a new, different like phase of Britney Spears, and it just like smaller and smaller it's hilarious I, they should do that with michael jackson that would be cool too yeah totally oh, yeah. i got it the largest record yeah um sorry world record anyone want to guess brent what's your guess what you mean how many there are or how big how many pieces yeah a hundred i think I think 300. 51 piece set <laughs> hand painted by Yulia Bereshnitskaya of Russia, look? completed in 2003. The tallest doll in the set measures 53.97 centimeters, 21 inches. The smallest is 0.12 inches. 
It's 51 pieces. Do Somebody could, why don't they just like make a bigger one after that? Take the big one. Oh yeah. And then just like, okay, well you can always make a bigger one, right? Yeah. Just keep going. Keep that world well, record going. Is, you'd have to like make it on a lathe. And at some point you're just going to max out. I mean, it's the biggest, you'd have to get like an industrial lathe to make the. You don't have to do a lathe. Why can't you just like start hand carving the future, the bigger ones? I guess. I don't know. Speaking I don't really plastic. know. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Or fabricate it out of like asbestos. <laughs> no, fiberglass. <laughs> Can we talk about, um, we could mix, change gears here. Talk about your pen pals. Yeah, I was, we, we, Molly especially was really nervous. So we have this inspiring quote. I'm nervous to come on the podcast yeah. because I've, this is my first time on a podcast and I'm shy, so. So You're doing great. So, so what, when, when we were talking about, um, you having us on the podcast before now i was like talking to natalie like uh doug like actually wants us to go on the podcast i thought like i brought it up as a joke and then you <laughs> you were serious i guess and then natalie's like oh my god yeah we absolutely have to do it and i was like oh i'm nervous and she's like let me read you this quote that my prisoner pen pal wrote in his last letter to me it's very inspirational so and we she read me the quote and i was like well okay maybe Maybe I should go on the podcast. We recently both um, registered with Books Inside, which provides literature and pen pals to um, people in prison. And um, I wrote my first letter to my pen pal a couple weeks ago with a lot of illustrations. And he wrote me three letters back. So I've read, uh, the first one I read had this really awesome quote that I feel like it's kind of religious, which take that or leave it, but... Um, it was gonna give us this, you know, inspiration to <laughs> do things. So, do you want to hear it? Yeah, I need to hear no, it. No, let's not hear it. So, anyway. Uh, so later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can see his like beautiful handwriting. Can you see? It's very Little closer. It's pretty. It's pretty nice. Even like parts of it are. It's all. It's all caps. Uh, yeah, I like how it's. This um, is my favorite part. The smi There's a little smiley face he drew. That's can you cute. see it? Okay. So <clears throat> it's a little bit long and it's from The Eighth Habit by Stephen Covey, page 41. He says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that you're, we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, the most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about, spring, about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our, pre our presence automatically liberates others. Smiley face. Isn't that well, sweet? that's that's awesome. But he didn't write that quote. He took it from something else. He's been re yeah. He got a book from the the group that provides literature, and um, quoted it because he was like, "Oh, you're a creative entrepreneur. Like this is an inspiring quote that I just read." And I was like, "I think it's really beautiful." Uh, did you take that quote to heart yourself? And did you feel like it resonated with you? Did you feel like it helped you in any kind it of way? It inspired Molly to come on the podcast. Yeah, right. it helped me. Really. Yeah. It inspired you to come on the podcast. Yeah. Well, because like, she was like really scared. And I was like, well, don't let this. Who's this quote? What were you like, scared I, I'm a nobody. I'm a freak. Like, <laughs> it's a bad business move for Doug to have me on his podcast. Yeah, that's the Why are you I was like, no, let your freak flag shine like the light <laughs> in the children's eyes or whatever. And I was like, all right. Why are you a freak? Because you're sassy? I'm a sassy freak. No, but why are you a freak? What's so freaky? About I just it? am. It's like inborn. Okay. No, we. I. I mean, you're the perfect Poundcast guests. I mean, I. I'm not trying to have people that are like. Not freaks on here, you know. Right. Yeah, this is a freak show. Everybody knows the Poundcast freak is a freak show. show. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just, <laughs> the freak show. So. Freak show. Molly, do you do you have a pen pal in prison too? Me. Um. 
I just barely got a, like matched up with my prison pen pal. And actually he's imprisoned in right where we just went last camping by the Kern River in Kern County, California. Did you tell him that? And he's like, all right, I'm, I got to escape. I got to escape. <laughs> I got to meet my pen pal. I got to meet I know, my pen pal not, down by the river. <laughs> I haven't written him yet. But I'm almost like, should I even tell him that I like went swimming this gorgeous river by right next to where he's locked up? A window to the. I guess I should. Yeah. You know what? Do you know what your different people are in for? No, and that's one of the things that the the people who run this program they're like, you can talk about it if they bring it up, but we recommend to not look that up just because this is about retribution and like growing beyond your your past. Um, so I don't know, but my, uh, my pal is getting out in three years. So if you found out that your pal, <laughs> your pal. was, I like calling him a pal. <laughs> if you found out that they were, um, is, is there a, if you fit, found out their crime, is there, would that, would that change the way you, your, your relationship with them or him? It, yeah, I could think of crimes that would, but, um, I don't know. I think there's. I think there's so many people in prison for like really silly stuff that, in like statistically, it's likely that I'd be like, "Oh, holy shit! You were in prison for like possession of marijuana, for instance," and that wouldn't. But yeah, there's plenty of crimes that I think would really taint a relationship for sure. <laughs> what if? I, go ahead. Would you be pen pals with someone that wasn't in jail, but they were like canceled, so they were kind of like in their own jail <laughs> they're in their own like, prison because in- like you know if you believe in healing and retribution yeah, and stuff, yeah sure i absolutely like, I, that, do, you have, do you have sympathy for people like that yeah yeah i think people Definitely. all need an opportunity to grow even if they're canceled or imprisoned it and like yeah it might it might change your feelings towards them but it doesn't mean they can't be they can't have changed exactly. and what if, the- if they're canceled they we should talk about them about yeah. why what why they're so they can solve it the problem so they can, yeah i totally <laughs> agree i totally feel the same way everybody deserves a second chance everyone deserves to grow, no, everyone deserves to like learn from their mistakes and grow and be a better person and be rehabilitated yeah yeah you know, and i think the prison culture well i don't want to get all political here but <laughs> i think we all agree that yeah. We don't want to just punish people forever. We want yeah, we want to give be, them. We want everyone in this country and everywhere to be a better person than than they used to be. We all make mistakes, and you know. <laughs> what are you doing, doing Brad? I you, I have to do this to like make it so that it, the camera doesn't. It's like it makes it dark. Yeah. It makes it too dark unless I I have to do that to like reset it. I don't oh, know. you got those. Vene- you're going Venetian style over there. That's what's going on. <laughs> It looks like it. You no, know, this is like a prison thing, by the I, way. I thought I was saying something, and you're like, no, 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 no. I'm not. <laughs> talk to the hand. No, no retribution for prisoners. No, no. I, I'm sorry. I have to. I have to say something here. I don't talk to the that. hand, Doug. No, it's more like it's more like we're all in our pr- own prison, and this is how they do it in prison. They put their hand up against the glass. <laughs> and they touch hands. Oh, when they're like talking on the phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're all, we're all in our little Zoom prisons right now. Yeah. So how did you guys get into the pen pal prison scene? One of our friends posted on Instagram, she works at the library and does a lot of work with books on the inside. And she posted like, hey, if anybody wants a prison or anyone who wants to become a pen pal, because in the pandemic, there a lot of prisons have had really limited like they get limit yard time and cafeteria time, so they're extra cooped up in their cells. And limited visitation. The, yeah, because time. they don't want to spread COVID. And so they're like this, I mean, it's always a good time to write to people who are in prison because they're, they have so much time on their hands and it's a nice outlet, but especially now. So she posted, her name's Lexi, and we were, I was like, yeah, let's, I want to do that. And then I told Molly about it. And she was like, I want to do it too. And then we told her other friend and they're like, I want to do it too. So do you guys want to do it too? You can do it. I, tried about, being, I just want to be Brent's pen pal. I want like when we're talking on the phone, we're just like, hey, when, you know, we're like talking about, uh, you know, let's shoot a video, let's edit this, let's do the, who's our guest next week. And then the pen pal, we get all like super Dude, poetry, just you know, super letters. personal, like laying out our soul on the line here. You we know? should. Y'all, do y'all do much of that? We might need. 
I, I could use. I, I should do more pen pal. I don't have a pen pal. I'm down. I I did it in the past a little bit. Prison style? Not prison style, but I had. Um, Remember in like the uh, '80s, you could just be a pen. Like before the internet, there was like something where you could just like be matched up with some random person and just have a well, pen pal. Or yeah, they did maybe that. way before the '80s. Like it was like a thing, right? Well, right, and they had they did that with like foreign. Yeah. They would set you up with foreign kids yeah. in school. But then also I did a thing where um, this is in the late 90s or early 2000s. Um, my friend on Craigslist found a pen, pen pal and he ended up not really wanting to carry it on. And he asked her, do you want to, my friend is interested. And <laughs> so we exchanged a few letters actually. He's yeah. trying to get rid of his pen pal. How I think he just found it to be overwhelming or something, or he didn't, <laughs> I forgot what, why he didn't it's, want to do it. After a while, it's like, oh my God, they keep sending me. It's like this burden, like I got to write back now. Ugh. It is weird. Letters are interesting, man. I mean, I've met people traveling and stuff and then exchanged a few letters with them. And it's interesting how that works. It's just so old fashioned. I mean, nobody does it anymore. It's all emails now. If I wrote letters to people by hand, it would be like so many scratched out, like, Oh, I started that sentence wrong. Like, because when okay. I type, it's just like blah blah, uh, back and backspace, 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 and the delete, delete, and back. This, I, it'd be just covered in like scribbles, scribbles that's all right. out wrong. I think stuff. that's okay. I think that's part of it. Or if you don't want that, you could write it on your phone or computer first, and then oh, and then look like you're some perfect. Yeah. Like, or you can you draft it. Really you can also like print it and send that. But I love draw. I love doing little drawings. I feel it, like so. there's something special in seeing someone's handwriting. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. It's very personal. Yeah. yeah. You know. By the way, I I have done that actually with letters I've written. I I make so many mistakes that I do a new one and the, with no mistakes. Yeah. It's just yeah, I think that's practice, before though. computers you had to do like drafts that way, mm -hmm. even if even with typewriters because you had to leave there or like white out. <laughs> My handwriting is so bad. I've never seen your handwriting. Let's see it. Do it. Give us a sample. Well, because sometimes I just journal in the morning because I heard that's something that it's like a good way to start your day. Do that, yeah. And I, I think I purposely do it. So if anyone found it, they wouldn't even know what I'm saying anyway. Totally. So yeah, I kind of do it on purpose. I, yeah. But it's like a combination of cursive, but then there's certain letters that I don't do cursive. So it's like, that's it's like a code. Weird. I have my own, I have my own like writing stuff. Echoed. It's a code. You do, you, it's a, it's a cipher. That's right. And I do it, of course, Italian. backwards and in Italian, like Da Vinci. <laughs> Me and him are all kind of on the same level. To find the treasure or whatever. Yeah. You got to hold up a mirror to it and then read it off the mirror. And you have to know it's, Italian. It's yeah. like, it's, it's, it's like, instead of Da Vinci, it's more like Da Lucenhop. <laughs> there you go. Da Lucen, <laughs> da, da Lucenhop. Da Lucen, it's his oh. last name. <laughs> Learning your last name just now, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just learned your last name. Oh yeah. Like an hour ago. Yeah. Um, uh, so, did you guys drive from Salt Lake City or what? Yeah, we did. And we camped outside of outside of Zion. Zion in National between. Park. And we're gonna mm -hmm. camp on the way back too tomorrow. Where are you, you gonna go like tomorrow? Nature? Uh, probably somewhere in California. There's a um, hot do you have spring. any recommendations? Oh yeah, we yeah. heard about a hot spring. We might mm -hmm. check like out. Like right outside of the Mojave. But it's, it might, might be a little desolate, but it could be nice. We love hot springs. The other day we went to the, um, a hot springs. We tubed down the, down the Kern River for like a mile or two. And then we got out and there was a hot springs, a popular one, Mir Miracle Hot Springs. Um, but there was this, uh, me and Sam were, Sam Borkson, who's been on the podcast. We were sitting in this one tub and there was a man of Native American descent. And Sam is really friendly with people and he started talking to the guy and he got this guy. Did you guys hear his songs? He started yeah. singing Native I, American songs. A, tub, a couple tubs over. You were a couple tubs down. I yeah. Still. Um, and he was singing these songs to the water and he was like, blessing the water or something that we were in. It was really cool. I was nearby, but I didn't get to hear it. I heard him talk about eating grasshoppers though. That was a good tidbit. Yeah, he said, when you eat a, when you eat a grasshopper, you feel like 
good and full of life. And then when you eat a French fry from McDonald's, you it tastes like death. <laughs> I gotta disagree because they taste good. They taste good. There's a reason why they're so popular. Anyway, <laughs> um, I have to actually take a phone call. Can you talk really quick, Brent? Yes, I can. So quick, just talk. <laughs> My name is Brent. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, California, and um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I used to go to Disneyland a lot as a child. What? Brent. Well, and now that Doug's gone, maybe I wanted to talk about it when you and Doug were both here. But anyway. Yeah, let's get down to business. Let's get into. Let's let's get into it now. You know. What's your story? Yeah, we need to know. What do you want to know? Well, um, what's your favorite color? Well, right there. growing up, it used to be blue, you know, but now I, I, but then I, I really like brown. That's my favorite color, brown. Brown town. Do you, um. What's your favorite color? Like dusty rose or chartreuse. You know what happens when you mix chartreuse with brown? Brown. Yeah, brown. <laughs> Maybe mix anything with brown. I know it's not a real color, but I think my favorite color is glow in the dark. Just anything that's glow in the dark, I love it. Okay, yeah. Um, well, there is a classic glow in the dark kind of color, which is yeah. sort of a, a white green, a whitish greenish kind of color. You know, that's illuminated. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's a good. Um, so I'm a brown boy. I like brown. Any shade? A specific shade or? I like just classic brown. You know. Um, <laughs> like when you're like clothes shopping you're choosing a shirt you're like oh, i'm gonna go with the brown one well you know what it's weird i started getting into reds in the last like i don't know, know five ten years or something like or maybe five years in the last five years i was like i started thinking you know what red is something i think i can get into to go from blue to brown to, brown to red that is quite a, a journey i wonder what it says about you psychologically like have you like reds usually like this like you know tough color that's like brave and do you think the color the favorite color changes reflect like the phases of your life yeah. at all like what yeah it's a, that's something to think about i mean look uh, yeah that no i've thought about that you right and that's a good it's a good it's a fun discussion because i thought blue was a cool color because it is a cool color you know i mean it's a cool it is a you know it's a cool temperature you know and i thought blue was cool because I, I liked the idea of I don't know, ice and water, and I was more watery, and then earth, and then brown becomes more earthy and fall, but brown kind of relates to, makes me think of the early 1980s, and there's something brown about that, and brown is an interesting, like walls. what? Something you know, brown about that. The wall, the, <laughs> that style of like wooden interior walls. Yeah, That's there's that, and there's also brown is a, a more obscure color in a way because it's a mix of different colors and you're unsure of what color it is in a way it's like it's it's a mix of colors it's different and brown kind of represents i think it represents my worldview in a lot of ways um in that it's it, it's kind of like gray but with color you know what i mean yeah brown is, sure. you know like and i and it's not and it's not so defined i like that and i like and i am brown myself to some degree as well and i um and i just i like the like the as sound of skin? brown. What? As in your skin? As in my sort of background in a way and, and, and um, being mixed race, you know? And, and I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I don't relate to brown. I like brown. That's the name of my first comedy album, Tales from the Brown Side. Oh, I thought um, you were going to say your first child. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of a cool child name. Um, but also, I, brown <laughs> is uh, not just... Um, it, uh, it's also, I like poo stuff too. I mean, I like poo humor, you know? Hey, so, um, um, Natalie, and Molly and Natalie, let's do that game that our friend did when we were camping in the Uintas. Oh, yeah. To Brent. We'll do Brent. it to Brent. Wait, what was your favorite? So, favorite color. Favorite color. You got that. You got that as Favorite well. animal. No. Yeah. Was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, your right. favorite animal. Turtle. And so, then your favorite body. Got, Water. We got your favorite color. Let's do your favorite animal. Well, I was just going to say about far, as far as reds goes, I don't know why I just started getting turned on by reds. And I thought, well, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with me as a person, but I don't know. Maybe you analyze. I don't know. You're starting to I feel like a little more fiery and bold in your, your like, lifestyle choices. Confident coming into your own. 
I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Are things like coming together in your life? Maybe, yeah. maybe so. I mean, yeah. Brent, next time you go on a date, if you ever go on a date again, <laughs> <laughs> Where not, you know, just because of, you know, this is a date right now, isn't it? This is, uh, yeah, this I have is, a boyfriend, so I have a I'm talking about Doug. I'm talking about Doug. <laughs> and Brent are on a date. Okay. Next time you're on a date with me, every Brent, episode is a date. Wear a right red. Yeah, right, y'all are cute too. You're always dating. Yeah. <laughs> wear, a, wear red. Wear red, and it'll work out. That's what I read somewhere. Oh yeah, I, it's interesting. Yeah, interesting. I went. I went on a date once, and we both wore red. Wow. You, you guys are like both we, trying to like. You both are trying to have. That date sounds hot. <laughs> smash, we didn't, we that. didn't coordinate that. We just did it well. Was it like? Did it work out? Was it a good date? I was okay. I mean, it wasn't. It was. A, it was a one-time only date. I mean, I didn't. Oh. We didn't. There was no follow-up. So, I mean, it was okay. It was all right. It was just breakfast I didn't, in bed. I didn't, what? Breakfast in bed. <laughs> breakfast in bed. Red, red leads to red. breakfast in bed. That's what we. Red that's what you know. Red. Okay, so we did bre- favorite color, and then favorite animal, and then we'll move on favorite- from there. Favorite body of oh you haven't done the animal yet yeah the last one is favorite body of water just turtle three. Three. There's only three hands. favorite animal Brent turtle <gasps> and why <laughs> because I used to have a pet turtle and um, I just I I don't know I just I I like turtles because they ha- always have a permanent smile on their face in a way even if you treat them really poorly and it's really sad oh my god you know me and Brent have the same <laughs> an- <laughs> have <laughs> answer animal. are we writing yeah, we're recording. I mean, this is this is gonna be a great reveal when we get to the end of this. Sure. Brent, did you know that that's his same favorite animal as Doug? I he, I know he has a turtle shirt. When we played this, no, I mean, I was a kid. I we've talked about this. I had pet turtles. I used to be obsessed with them. I used to try to find them at the local pond. And that's why. That's why you guys are dating. That's why y'all are dating. That's why we're dating. This is why this is gonna work out. Your okay, third turtles. question. Favorite body of water. And like your, your experience with body of water. And yeah, tell us why. Well, does that mean like a geographical body of water or it could be like water in a bathtub or something, you know what I mean? Or something like that. I know? say go, f- go for any, any interpretation, but I think I it's think like- bathtub works. Just your favorite, like that you, that you appreciate the most, you resonate with or like you're splashing around. You favorite body of water. And why? I mean, it's hard to say. I, I I don't know. I don't know how to. I'm not sure how to answer that. I mean, um, yeah. If I had to pick something, I mean, I guess my bathtub as a child. I mean, comes to mind. You know, it was a, it was a blue bathtub, so the water kind of looked blue. You know, looked blue kind of. And um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to. I don't know. Favorite. I mean, it's a couple. I could name, as far as, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've- well, wait, wait, what did you like about the blue bathtub of your childhood? Well, it just was kind of cool that it was a blue water. You know, it felt like you were in a blue- The water's thing. blue? The, the bathtub in the interior was blue. Oh, so it looked, the, the bathtub was blue, so it kind of made it look like the water was blue, kind of, you know, so that looked kind of cool. And, and oh, I don't know, it's like, I, I like I like those times, kind of, you know? And I, I don't know, it's just sort of, trying to think of favorite body of water it's hard to say i'm sure i mean that's a that's a huge question that i haven't really thought about and i don't know if i could think of the answer so easily i mean i used to be in a water sports camp when i was a kid and you used to do this sort of like uh it was kind of like water skiing but it was with your knees though and um that was at castaic lake i don't know that's not necessarily my favorite but I don't know. The Pacific Ocean is near. It. I, I'd say this: the Pacific Ocean is an ocean that I grew up around and with, and so that's sort of a close. You know, as far as famous bodies of waters, you know, that's the Pacific is something close to. I don't know. I can't. I don't know how to answer that. Okay. Well, that's good enough. Now, There's, I spent a lot of time in the pool uh, as a kid. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. There we go. I forgot even the, how the body, do you guys remember how the body of the water plays out? Yeah, we'll get to Okay, that. stand by. Okay, so the, your favorite color is how you brown. see yourself. And you answered that perfectly because you, yeah. you see yourself as brown and you like, you already nailed that. Mm-hmm. Well, and the changing favorite color. That's, I feel like, exemplary of. Well, brown favorite, is ultimately my favorite color. Your favorite animal 
is what you're looking for in a partner. Someone you could treat poorly and they still have a smile on their face. <laughs> so you he said it. He said it. Well, and also like the, the turtle's kind of like stable and like lives for a long time and is just like gonna be there for you, you know? Do you know what? I don't like, I don't want somebody who's gonna be going into their shell though. You know what I mean? I don't really like that. You know? Well, that's not the part Look, the game is kind of, the game is BS, but it's just fun to like, I want someone who's always, who doesn't even have a shell, you know, they just actually, no, I don't want somebody like sensitive. Slug. Actually. You want like a slug? No, actually, I don't want somebody sensitive. I want somebody though. I like outgoing though, you know? What it, I mean, a turtle doesn't have to always go in its shell. Like, and if, especially if that's not something you like, it's like, I like this about a turtle. That's what I like in a partner. You know what? You're right. I can, I can make this work. I can make the turtle thing work. The, the shell is kind of like armor, right? It's, I, I, do, I like that. Somebody who's not super sensitive, uh, well, in a way that where you have to walk on, you know, eggshells or whatever, you know, like somebody who is not too hard. Anyway, whatever. Let's not get into it. They can protect <laughs> themselves. You don't have to worry about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone who can protect yeah. themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So explain the body of water one now. Okay. So the body of water is like what you, you're like, your ideal sex life, I think it was. So like all these yeah, different like, things or something? Yeah, all these different things. And like a lot that of are nostalgic maybe. And like a child's bathtub? <laughs> no, his childhood bathtub and the relaxed blue color. So relaxed. what does that mean in a sexual context, do you think? I mean, usually someone's like... Familiarity. Something that's like familiar. Yeah. Actually, you know what? That's you're right. Familiarity. That is oh, actually Pacific Ocean. That's, all of them. All yeah. of them were related to familiarity. It was all about like, oh, I grew up with the Pacific Ocean. I grew up with, you know, that that blue bathtub. I grew up with whatever. And that is probably very true. Actually, that it's um, familiarity that makes me feel most uh, open to or whatever. Yeah. Sexually aroused. Or like sexually what? comfortable. Nothing. Oh yeah. You said makes you feel sexually aroused. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Brent, in that in that blue bathtub, is that where you got your first boner? <laughs> no, I didn't actually. I did not actually. Do you remember your first boner? I remember the time around the time my first boner was, and I didn't live in that house with that blue bathtub. So it was before that. I, it was before the blue bathtub. Oh, well, I remember looking at uh, Target ads and stuff for aerobics <laughs> outfits. So we're talking like, you know, early '80s aerobics outfits the you know what I mean? era of aerobics yeah. clothing yeah sure so like i remember getting erections from looking at the ads for the aerobics outfits and stuff those are probably my first boners yeah well, what were you like 12 or when, when this is some after dark shit stuff we should go to after dark soon <laughs> well we... i actually i told i told my parents about it because i didn't know what was going on exactly you know? uh -oh. <laughs> what did you say what did you say that's a good well, relationship. I told my mom, I said, when I, sometimes when I look at a woman or like, you know, if I look at one of these ads with aerobics outfits, my penis like sticks up, you know? <laughs> and I was like, like what? very good, very good, son. Why is it? Well, well, she said, <laughs> like, very good. Said, my mom said, oh, why don't you tell your father about that? <laughs> Go tell your dad. We don't, I don't want to hear about this. And then I told my dad and I don't remember what he said. He said, oh, okay, well, well. I don't know. I forgot what he, I don't, I don't, I don't think he said it. Really Did your parents ac actually talk to you about sex ever? Not really, but, um, should, wait, let's talk about this after dark maybe. Okay. Because we got to go to the beach soon. So we got to wrap this up. So, uh, thank you, Molly and Natalie for joining us. And I hope you had a great time. We're going to, you're going to stick, you're going to stick with us for the after dark section, right? Yeah. yeah what, I don't know what it is, but I'm, Oh, we just talk. We just talk for another half hour for the we talk about Brent's first erections. You know? For the page, oh, we're gonna page get the first bonus material. We talk about Brent's first boner. Well, we're, let's talk about your first. Um, boner, uh, yeah, we can talk about mine after dark too. We'll talk about your guys's first boners too. Hey? Yeah. it's not just limited to the boys. Thank you to Louisville Vegan Foods, LouisvilleVeganFoods.com. Use the code word Poundcast and get all kinds of great stuff for twenty percent off. Also, you want to listen to our, you want to keep listening to this? Simply go to patreon.com slash poundcast and subscribe, support us for as low as $2 a month. Okay. That's embarrassing how low the introductory price is, but that's how much it is. You can hear, what is that? 50 cents an episode. That's right. That's nothing. Okay. 
Anyway, if it ain't a pit, it ain't shit. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. For having a fun. Yeah, thanks. Bye bye. Okay. Oh, hold on. Sorry. We should just real quick. Uh, should we? Is there anywhere people want to check out your stuff? You know, I mean, is there? Oh, do you want to mention anything like that? Yeah, we're not saying goodbye. We got to plug your your stuff, of course. Duh. Bye bye revoked. So we already plugged the Shroopies Instagram page. Look it up. There's an infomercial on there too. S H M zero zero. S H M zero zero F I three Z Z. Exactly. And then we have our own personal Instagram account. So mine is at Blobosoft. That's B L O B B O S O F T. And mine is. And I'm Molly, by the way. Mine Again. is at Natalie underscore C A E. And all of my projects are listed in my profile. So if you're curious to see those, including Truthies. Truthies? Smooth, smooth. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. All right, cool. Well, okay, this is the real goodbye. Real goodbye. The real goodbye until we keep talking more. So, bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Poundcast. 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 Welcome back. Welcome to the Something about